I'm a handle, my little brat. Most fascinating. It seems the effects of the time stream reversed your age. No, die. I'm gonna kill that kid. And Kavu, the filthy traitor. Also, thanks for the new clothes. None of my clothes fit me anymore. Mm, do not worry, Tari. Team Phantom is a family. And when one of us hurts, we all hurt. We'll put an end to this traitor. Once and for all. Thank you. Um, where's the boss? <laughs> he stepped out to get some fresh air. He hasn't been the same since the champion asked what his name was. If you ask me, it really shouldn't matter all that much since we call him boss because he's our leader. What other title should he need? One cup of Momo milk, please. Coming right up. Are you a trainer? Why do you ask? Well, I have this Pokemon I'm having trouble with. Oh? As you know, polarizing is all the rage these days, but my Pokemon is so weak I can't even get it to win a stupid battle, let alone polarize. So, I was wondering if you wanted it. It's a pig fee, by the way. If you're willing to trade, I'm down, or hell, I'll just give it to you. It's way too weak for me to keep on my team. I have it tied up in the back alley outside. You what? Yeah, <laughs> the dumb thing is so loyal it probably thinks it's part of the training. <laughs> Enough. I'll take it. Show me where it is. You're serious? Okay, sure, right this way. Now, Pigfeet, listen. I can't keep training you. You're just not strong enough, so I'm giving you away to this man here. I just don't have time for some no-name Pokemon like yourself to give me a bad trainer's rep. Name? Are you okay, miss? <laughs> Holy crap! Who the hell are you? What the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, just another, another no-name no Pokemon which you have no time for. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Stay back! You, you were right about, about not having time, because time is all up for you, human. Please! No, don't hurt me! I'll give you my rarest Pokemon, please! I'm afraid that won't suffice. You, you saw my true form, and, and no, no one other than, than my friends can see that, that and live. Ah! I have, I have no name. name. I have never, never been fully accepted, accepted by human society. I formed my own family, made of those who were ostracized, like me. I am not like you beings who build physical and institutional walls to separate yourselves from those who you view as lesser or weaker. Pigfy, let us go home. You're on the road to Basso City. Not only is it home of your sixth gym badge, but the Lord Keeper as well. You can't wait to tell them how you actually traveled to the past before. But before you head out, someone stops you. Young master player, is it? <laughs> you best that I advise President Norman in Pokemon battle, which isn't anything to be taken lightly. He's a hard worker and a very, very noble man. Oops. There I go forgetting to introduce myself. I'm Mr. Jim, president of the Bereavement Corporation. I must say, dear boy, you make quite a reputation for yourself. You stopped one of our rogue tour guides on Sandstone Island and saved my company's name. I must thank you from the bottom of my heart. Due to your impressive endeavors, I would like to reward you with our revitalizer. What's it do? Why, show him, Charles. You're taking home our lovely new revitalizer. Harnessing the preservational and somewhat magical properties of Sandstone Island Sand. This nifty tool is able to revive prehistoric Pokemon fossils back to their former glory. Just stick a fossil in and presto change One living abomination to God. But that's not all. 
It's also backpack sized and can fit into any bag or off screen inventory for reviving on the go. Thank you, Charles. He's our unpaid intern. That neat contraption was spearheaded by Dr. Gamble Jr. Unfortunately, he went missing not too long ago. But hey, more royalties for me. <laughs> this is perfect. Now you have the means to revive the two fossils you have without tracking down Dr. Gamba. Let's test it out. You can either revive the Nasher fossil or Cervix fossil or both. It works. With your fossils finally revived, you use your power bass to teleport to Canary Town and head south of it onto Route 12. Heading down Route 12, it begins to rain and lightning. If you're not ready, the intense conditions of this tropical rainforest route will overpower you in under five minutes. Along this route, you'll be able to finally encounter Chihuahua and Platador, along with an ultra rare spun of Kawari. Numerous old Pokemon can be found out here as well. Heading towards the center of the route, you'll be able to encounter two more new species of Pokemon, Grizzel and the regional variant of Trapinch. Grizzel, the tiny step Pokemon, a normal type. It is known for its very graceful movements and nimbleness even from birth it can outrun predators with its surprising rapid speed. Despite its strong affinity for planes, its senses are adept at navigating forest making it difficult to track. Trapinch. Zonon form. The nymph Pokemon. A bug type. They nest in hallowed out trees patiently waiting for prey to pass by so it can intercept them with its giant jaws which have been said to possess enough force to crush stone. To no surprise, there are still trainers out here ready to battle. Why in the world do you not have a raincoat on? I'm gonna be a ninja one day so I ran away from home to practice harnessing my nen. Oops. I'm in chakra. So cold, 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 cold. After defeating them, you miraculously manage to find a fighting gym within the rainy terrain. This item can be used to evolve your Ada into the last unrevealed evolution. Brawlage the militant Pokemon and one of the evolved forms of Arda. A fighting type. It has a very aggressive temperament and will challenge anything that makes eye contact. It will continue to battle despite its injuries which can lead to its untimely demise. Also, if you level up your Chihuahua in this weather, or any rainy weather, it will evolve. Area. The Cloud Dog Pokemon and the evolved form of Chihuahua. A water and flying type. The water and ice particles that its fur is composed of is simply too small to feel the effects of gravity granting it the ability to fly. By this time in the journey, your team should be going through an evolution renaissance. Hippitat. The habitat Pokemon and the evolved form of Hiplant. A grass and water type. Many of Pokemon can live their entire lives on the backs of Hippitat without ever leaving. Although it's seen relaxing in riverbeds and sunbathing, this Pokemon is as aggressive as they come and will relentlessly attack without reason. Lastramtha. Lamp Elephant Pokemon and the evolved form of Lamphan. A psychic and steel type. It is believed that the creature lurking out of Lastramp's head and trunk is the Pokemon's true self and the body is just the shell. Some researchers believe this Pokemon holds the secret to astral projection. Porphia, the racketeer Pokemon and the evolved form of Mobster, a water and dark type, upon evolving its nervous system multiplied giving each of its claws its own sentience. 
It carefully monitors the seas from the shadows while smuggling treasures and rare items. Any Pokemon that steal from it is never heard of again. After traveling more south, the rain begins to become too much for you. But fortunately, there's a building nearby for you to dry off. A sign is there that reads, The Noah Power Plant. Keep out. So naturally, you step inside. Inside this place, you run into a lot of older electric Pokemon, including the two new ones, Wapole and Frogrin. It's an injured Murkrow. What's one doing in this environment? Maybe a super potion will help heal it. What's it gonna be? Will you help the Murkrow? You go to hill it when BOOM! A trap springs up and traps you in a net. Ha <laughs> oldest trick in the book. No trainer worth their sweat can resist helping an injured Pokemon. <laughs> I am the greatest bounty hunter in Zonua. No one has escaped me. Oh and now uh, don't think about calling out one of your Pokemon. My electromagnetic doohickey disables all Pokeballs in 50 meters. The Phantom Team has put a huge bounty on you, so to be honest, I did not think it was going to be this easy. But thanks to Murkrow, <laughs> he and I is going to be filthy red. Hiya! What? What in the planet blue? Murkrow! Murkrow! Help me! Use, uh, use the, uh, the pet! Uh, something. Oh, oh no, I... I've done use the manipulator to make you forget every trick. Oh! It's been forever! I just happened to be here for training when I saw that creep lurking around the power plant, scratching his butt and laughing to himself. Don't worry, he won't be able to bother you anymore. I put him in a coma using my Dombe skills. I also ran his pockets too. I think you deserve his fishing rod. See you around! I'm off to inflict more bodily injury with no adult supervision! Thanks to an old friend, you were able to escape from a creepy bounty hunter. Continue south, and near this part of the route, you can finally encounter as a known Ponyta. Eventually, you will arrive in Basel City. Basel City is unlike any place you've seen so far. It's an exotic forest city. Buildings in this town are like sophisticated tree houses nestled among the branches. Each house is ordained with vibrant colors blending seamlessly with the natural beauty of the forest. Rain and light filters through the leaves casting a warm dappled glow on the town below. It's a place where nature and architecture harmoniously coexist, creating a truly enchanting atmosphere. Modern temples can be seen on the grounds of this fantastical city. A sign reads, Basel City, the city that has become one with nature and tradition. The trees here are the largest in the Pokemon world. We've often been compared to a fortress city in the Hoenn region, but unbeknownst to a lot of people, our city actually predates them by around 2,000 years. Ujumbo, Mr. Player. Don't look so shocked. We've been expecting you. Just because we live in trees doesn't mean we don't keep up on current events. You're an upcoming celebrity at this point. I'm the mayor of Basel City. And on behalf of my city, we'd like to thank you for all you have done for Zanoa. From invigorating the gym challenge, to standing up to Team Phantom. So, as long as you are here, you get free access to explore all of our temples. But, I'm sure you have your eyes set on our gym leader. They just so happen to be my younger sibling. You can find them east of here. They have a special gift for you. Gift? What could it be? Rare candy? A TM? After navigating around through the city, you can take the time to visit the temples. Once you're all done, you head to the gym, which is in the easternmost part of the city. What's up fam? This 
this temple is actually the gym of Enyuba, the dragon type gym leader. You'd be dragging your feet if you go and fighting with another dragon type. On the contrary, go with fairy! Jumbo player, I'm... Gift? Gift? Oh, whoa, whoa, calm down. I haven't even introduced myself yet. Are you always this chatty? Take it easy. You know, from the stories I heard, I thought you were the strong, silent type. Fine. Okay, I'll give you your gift. Follow me. Anamba leads you deep into the underground section of the temple. There is a massive statue of a dragon serpent Pokemon. The gifts I have for you has been guarded and protected by generation to generation. My ancestors made sure to keep these for you on chance you would arrive one day. You see two stone Pokeballs engulfed in. Is it Amber? I know of your time traveling antics. You see, I am a descendant of Dragon Master Siri. Being a lore keeper from a long line of lore keepers, each generation learned of how you managed to see favor with Lazajwa and Awodesh and push Zona to unify. These two Pokemon are gifts from the past. Ancient Zonans discover combining the honey from Mal Forest and the sandstone island sand has great preservation benefits and use it to encase these Pokemon for you. And Amber breaks the Pokemon out of the Amber. You receive a Zanoan Ryalu and Zanoan Ball Toy. I'm sure you've heard Zona was split into three ruling factions. Those who worship Lazajwa and those who worship Maudej. But what if I told you the third party worshiped neither? Yes, that's right. They worship an entirely different Pokemon. The dragon type Pokemon known as In Yokairo. It came to be as early as our planet form, enriching the land with rivers and mountains. Once it ran out of power, it flew off into the cosmos, never to be seen again. In Yokairo is what the original people of Zona worshiped before anything else. I think it's time we head back up to the gym. There is one other piece of lore I have for you, but due to tradition, I can't disclose it with you unless you earn my gym badge. So I hope you stepped in here with a team of battle-ready monsters. I, Inamba, will test you to see if your previous gym victories were a fluke. Dragon types are my family's signature Pokemon. When I was growing up, they raised me on tales of the Pokemon that stopped feud between them. Rodon and Kyogre, or the mighty dragon that was banished to the distortion world by Arceus. Dragons are objectively the best type to ever exist. They're strong against most types and are almost impossible to be taken down. In fact, most legendary Pokemon are part dragon. Well, at least the ones that matter anyway. What? What's that? You're saying any type can be great? Okay. Then prove it! My dragons will devour you! Dragadon the cannon Pokemon and the evolved form of Dispatcher. A dragon type. Its cannon can blast through mountains it has adapted a hardened scales around its cranium to protect its head from the shots fired by the cannon. It will become uncontrollable when enraged and will destroy everything in sight. Dragannon is built like a literal tank. On with the Mega Launcher ability, any aura or pulse based moves are powered up, so watch out. A draw? This must be the tension N felt when Gatis betrayed him. We're not nearly done. Vibrava, show him what for! Vibrava Zono and Form. The Quiver Pokemon and the evolved form of Trappage. A bargain dragon type. It feeds on aquatic based Pokemon such as Poliwag, Magikarp, and Surskit. As it grows larger, it moves on to flying type Pokemon. When overheated, it will skim the surface of lakes to cool off. Being a dragon and bug type, Zeno and Vibrava will have a few weaknesses to exploit. A flying rock, ice, dragon, or fairy Pokemon will be great against it. 
but letting it set up Quiver Dance will spell your downfall. Wanting to get this over with, you decide to polarize early. This time you're fusing a grass type and an electric type to create... Zapalo, the fusion titan Pokemon. A grass and electric type. According to Zonoan mythology, it has the power to bring fertility to the land and protect crops from harm, and was worshipped as a symbol of abundance and prosperity. Its tusks generate electricity. By Brava proves to be no match for your Titan. I was wondering when you were going to start taking things seriously. But as you know, Polarizing takes two of your Pokemon out, so now you just have your Titan and one other Pokemon left. Also not to mention, since you polarized earlier, that gives me the upper hand to counter. Now it's my turn! Polarize! Anamba fuses an Ice-type and a Dragon-type to create... Ankia wa Ba'afu. The Fusion Titan Pokemon. A Dragon and Ice-type. According to Zono and Mythology, it represents the balance between control and chaos. It ignites the battlefield, freezing adversaries in its tracks and leaving a trail of inspiring destruction in its wake. Even my Titan is part dragon. Sure, this means I'm all out of Pokemon, but I assure you, this Dragon Titan shall lead me to victory. And now this Titan proves to be too much for yours. <laughs> We've reached the final chapter of this story. Send out your last Pokemon so I can win. That Pokemon is no match for a dragon. You're at a massive disadvantage with your starter Pokemon. Also, you have no more tricks since you already polarized earlier. Your starter has managed to get you out of all types of situations than any other Pokemon on your team. But how will it this time? There's something you should know about Zenoan starters. They don't evolve like traditional starters. No. They evolve through high friendship. Bow Wow the Baobab Pokemon and the evolved form of Dingra. A grass and steel type. Due to its hard and impenetrable wooden skin it is ever rarely damaged. The leaves around its body can stiffen and sharpen like swords and will shoot them at anyone who threatens its trainer. Banbaku the explosive Pokemon and the evolved form of Blasticoot is said to destroy entire mountains with its explosive rage. If the dynamite-like appendages owe its back began flash rapidly run. It means Banbaku is about to explode. <laughs> Karental the reef Pokemon. The evolved form of Karasal. It can fire the sea life growing off its back like projectiles piercing even metal. It lurks in for the depths of the ocean hunting any human who it sees polluting the waters it lives in. Your starter has noticed your will to win and answered the call by evolving. Dragons were slain. I apologize for calling your recent gym victories flukes. You're obviously a very powerful trainer who shares a great bond with their Pokemon, as your actions have proven. The actions that you take now, are they based on the ideals you cling to? Or are they based on actual truths? And if they are, how much of the truth do you think you know? Regardless, I present you with this 
The official Pokemon League scale badge. As promised, I'll disclose that last piece of lore I have. Meet me outside when you're ready. Six badges down, two more to go. Now that's how to train a dragon! Nice work! Let us go to the Flygon. Flygon. Zonon form. The mystic Pokemon and the final evolved form of Trappage. A bargain dragon type. It has garnered the nickname Spirit of the Jungle. It can see faster than most Pokemon, seeing around 200 images per second. Some scientists theorize Zono and Flygon used to be much larger due to high oxygen levels millions of years ago. Hop aboard. This is Far Off Island. And here lies the temple prison of a bad tempered, diabolical, and psychopathic Pokemon, Boravu. Long ago, my ancestors locked it there to protect the world from his malice. But after many ages, it was freed by an ancient relative of the Kudoboa. I have not met a magical beast that can't speak the tongue of man. But I kept my end of the bargain. Now, grant me the power to be the most unstoppable battler for generations! <laughs> Free at last. Well, aren't you brave, human? You're the first to dare release me from this temple prison. As a reward, I'll bestow upon you knowledge you so desperately seek. And there, the code of the Kutaboa was created. But it came with a cost. Ha <laughs> ha At last, I will be able to dethrone even Queen Heshma. What? What? Why do I feel so weak? What's going on? <laughs> Let me enlighten you. I feed on the very essence of those to whom I grant wishes. The darker the heart, the more I absorb. And your aura is an abyss of eternal darkness. So I shall drain you of all your life. <coughs> I can't. You can't. I can't not be allowed to perish here. I have a family. Oh, do not worry. They will remember you for your sacrifice. It will forever be immortalized in the pages of this book. Farewell, human. With this sinister Pokemon being free, the queen of the solar tribe, king of the lunar tribe, and king of the sky tribe teamed up to defeat Barovu, re-imprison it back here, and finally unify Zona. It's getting late. Flygon will fly us back to Basil City. Soar high like a dragon player. You're well on your way to the Pokemon League. After learning how the code of Kutaboa came to be and how Zenoa was unified, your eyes are primarily set on your seventh gym battle, which seems to be to the east of here in a city known as Eigen City. 